We are Pierre, Lisa, and Tiller, now sailing in French Polynesia in the South Pacific. Subscribe to join our adventures, and we always appreciate your comments to help us make this channel better. In our last episode, we left the Tuamotos to sail to the Marquesa Islands, and we arrived in Teoway Bay in Nukohiva. The town sits on the edge of an ancient volcanic crater, and the islands are lush and green, full of many fruits and vegetables, particularly breadfruit, coconut, bananas, avocado, many, many grapefruit, all sorts of citrus, and even lettuce and tomatoes, which is such a nice change from the Tuamotos. The grocery stores are well stocked, and there are even some very nice restaurants. After exploring the town, the next order of business was to finish the solar panel installation that we had started in the Tuamotos. So the left panel had been done with some temporary wiring. We needed to finish the wiring and to install the panels on the port side. Our next video will give all the details about this installation. We got that project finished just before a friend from Boston arrived. She was going to be in Nukohiva just a couple days before we set sail for another island in the Marquesas. But we did get time to take a hike over to another bay. Back at the boat it started raining really hard and that's always a good opportunity to clean the boat. When we're at anchor we like to take advantage of natural fresh water to clean the boat. <laughs> oh it's gonna be sparkling clean! <laughs> We have this large swell coming in from the south, making the boat anchored quite rocky. And those are from storms around Tahiti. And there's a cruise ship coming in. It's 5.50 in the morning and we see this cruise ship coming in. And we have friends on the cruise ship, so we're kind of looking forward to spending a day with them. Are you watching the cruise ship come in too? Got you guys watching the cruise ship through our sunscreen. Now what they would do is they would call us on VHF if mm -hmm. there was an issue. As God said, it's possible to move very politely because they don't have the right to do it. Right. And or uh, they would just send their dinghy over. Mm -hmm. They'll probably and send what, the dinghy over. And what they do is they use those life rafts there on the side. Mm -hmm. Some of them are used for to transfer passengers back and forth. But right now they're not allowed to do that because they are just coming in from North America. Mm -hmm. So they're not allowed to disembark the boat. So the first thing is going to happen, they'll put one of those that have in the water, they'll go to shore, they'll get a the custom officer, gendarme, bring it back on board and they'll start doing the paperwork. Okay. We were told it was going to take them an hour to do the paperwork for the whole ship. Yeah, one or two hours. Yeah, but I don't think everyone's going to want to get off at the same time, but they I don't know where they've come from, Galapagos or Panama Canal, but they've been at sea probably for a couple weeks. Oh. Yeah. And you were just talking about what would happen if we were in the way. You said someone would come on, come over and tell us to move, even though no, they would first ask us to move. They would <laughs> ask us because very politely. The rule of the road here in the sea is if you're anchored first, it's people who come after who are responsible for not hitting your boat. They they still haven't dropped the anchor. If it started to swing, it would hit us. I don't have this on Zoom, 
This cruise ship's about a thousand feet from us and the ship is about a thousand feet long. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe I gotta tell that boat to move. The uh, uh, Danish boat. Because it's right there. It turns out the cruise ship used thrusters all day to keep it from swinging towards any of the anchored boats. Now normally we wouldn't even go to shore when there's a cruise ship in port, but we went ashore to pick up our friends, and the island of Nukohiva was giving everyone from the cruise ship a nice Marquesan welcome. friends Jennifer and Brian from Ontario came on board and stayed to the end for some extra content on how Brian makes a Bloody Mary. Okay guys, cheers. Cheers. All nice right. to have you on board. Canadians. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Yay. <laughs> 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 yeah. Canadian salute. Oh, oh I, I thought we should be drinking beer. Bloody Caesars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Canadian, isn't it? <laughs> well normally with a boat like this what we do is we calculate what the depth is. I watch the chain go out. When the I figure that the anchor has hit the bottom. I will tell Pierre it's on the bottom and yeah. then he starts to back as I play it out. And then once we've got the length of chain that we want, we'll put a little pull on the engine as soon as it's tight. And then he'll take it up to 200 RPM with both engines to make sure if there's a storm that we would hold. So we give it like oh, a yeah. real whack with the motor and that way we know we can sleep at night. Some people who are not used to uh, Amazing. Some people who are not used to sailing just drop the anchor and then have lunch, you know, and yeah. don't pay attention <laughs> until until they start dragging when there's a storm. And then they learn, right, Pierre? Wakey, wakey, stony lady. Anchoring one hundred and one. Your drink is in the top compartment of the freezer. Oh, great! <laughs> top compartment. A couple more pieces of ice, probably. Yeah, a couple pieces of ice. ice top. <laughs> yeah, there's just help yourself to ice. We got our ice machine going. Super close. Oh, just put, lost some water there, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> no, and behind us, this boat's on their like fourth attempt to anchor, so we don't know if they don't have enough chain or if their anchor's too small. How about both? Is it? Not the both? change in the anchor's too small. <laughs> so it's probably the first time they anchor since they left Panama. They're on their fifth time now, Pierre. Mm -hmm. They just raced it again. Because in Panama, they stayed at Merida. And these are careful from the factory, you will be all winning the murder. Oh, the thing just stung you. You got stung? Yep. You got stung? Just lightly. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Cruise liner is to them, cruise liner is to them. This is setting vessel Biotrek on 164. Station cooling is added up, final 168. We're working channel? 08. Okay. Station cooling is added up, station cooling is added up, channel 08. Uh, yes, sir, the, this is setting vessel Biotrek. We're kind of right on to your port bow. And we have two guests of yours. Uh, we're just wondering what are the uh, whether we can bring them back directly to the boat with our tender, or whether we should bring them up for shore. Over. Bye, Trey. Bye, Trey. This is added up. Um, unfortunately, we don't think your tender will fit with our platform. So if you could just take them to shoreside, that'd be fantastic. Bye, guys. Bye, Lisa. Thank you so much. See you next summer, maybe, or maybe in two years. We don't know. Early the next morning, before the 5 a.m. sunrise, we left for the island of Tawata. We got the main cell up, we got the Genoa out, one reef in the main, we're on port ta tack. We're going uh, seven to eight knots, I guess eight knots. Uh, upwind again. Yep. Here we are, upwind again. That's the 
sound of adjusting sails. The seas are still big from all the rolling we had. There's a storm down south giving us large seas. We were anchored here and my friend and I took a little hike over the mountains over to this bay. It's very pretty. A little rough. Kawata has unusual geography for the Marquesas with its turquoise waters and white sand beaches. The men from the village in the next bay gave Pierre tow back to the boat with his wingboard. Often in the morning we could hear the cries of the goats as they jumped nimbly from place to place along these steep cliffs. The ocean was too rough for us to take our small octender dinghy to the main town, but friends in our boat Marmut took us in their large dinghy so that we could see the church that had been built in that town out of local stones.
We then visited this small bay of Hapitoni, a small inhabited bay, but with no store, and the local children were delighted to see us and came over to speak with us. And then it was time for our friend Elise to leave to return to Boston. So we sailed to the nearby island of Hiva Oa, which has an airport, to drop her off. And since the supply ship was coming in, we left right away to return to Toata because there's no room in the anchorage when the supply ship is in. It's about a 35 minute walk into town from the marina, and we had a chance to walk into town, have lunch, and to visit the Gauguin Museum, which has expanded since we were there many years ago. Really worth the visit. The next morning, Elise took a taxi to the airport and we headed back to Tawata. We would return to Hiva Oa after the supply ship so that we could stay a little longer and visit the island. In our next video, I'll be telling you about our solar panel installation and we'll continue to travel the Marquesas Islands and experience this absolutely beautiful part of the world. Stay to the end for some extra content on how Brian makes a Bloody Mary. Viewers of our channel have heard me talk about cerebral cavernous malformations, or CCM, because I'm trying to bring awareness of this vascular disorder. It's really like a vascular brain tumor. Listen to the Claytons and how it's affected them. Hi, we're the Claytons. I'm Nicole. I'm Ben. And this is Mary Ellen. She's our seven-year-old. Uh, she's affected by CCM3, um, like her dad. You want to speak to some of your experience, Ben, and why a cure would matter to you? Uh, it would mean absolutely everything to me. I could drive again, I could work again, um, I could be, truly be the father and the husband that I really want to be. I could get back to just um, getting everything out of life, especially for my little one here. Pray constantly for a cure. She'll be a senior in high school 10 years from now. 10 years is a good amount of time for us to see a cure, or maybe even multiple treatments and a cure. We believe it can happen. We believe it can happen because um, we have to. Okay, now for Brian's Bloody Mary recipe. He says the secret is in spicing the cubes. I'm not one who likes to make mixed drinks, so I thought it was interesting. It's just spicing the cubes, but tell me how, what you're making and how you made it. Okay, so these are, uh Bloody Caesars without the Caesar mix. I'm using some uh, tomato juice instead. It looks like it's from the island. It's a very thick juice. And first I spice the cubes with pepper, some Tabasco, and some Worcester sauce. And then added the vodka. And next Good was vodka. three of the uh, Three of the tomato juice, and you're measuring. And, and we're all set. And I am measuring everything. Uh, I use one jigger of uh, of vodka and two jiggers of the tomato juice. All right. So it's a two to one mixture. There we go. 